stabilize Monte is his amplifier and we took the endosphere amplifier and saw how to go you know, the ways over here. This is not the best way, but we'll see the other better way soon. Okay? But so far we do understand that if you to have high gain, you do need multi cell amplifiers, and if you do have multi cell amplifiers, you have to study the stability and do something to make sure that uh, it is stable and the damping factor is low. Okay? So, those things we have to make sure, right? Because we have uh, analyzed the stability of these systems in some detail and saw that the more ports you have and the closer they are, the more under damped the response will be. Okay? Now, we also know how to analyze these things by looking only at the loop gain magnitude and phase response as opposed to calculating the closed loop response. Okay? So we did both, we calculated both the loop gain and the closed loop response for first and second order systems. And that we extend to high order systems. Okay? Whatever we learn from first and second order, we extend to high order systems. And the bottom line is that whatever order system you have, you should just make the response mostly look like first order response. That is, any uh, additional ones and zeros beyond the first one should appear after the unity loop gain frequency. Okay? So it's like Henry Ford's, you can have any, you can have the car in any color as long as it's black. So you can have any order as long as it looks like first order. Okay? I think I 
sort of a toy example of what you expect in a potential amplifier. We expect either more sailors or more capacitors. But uh, for now, we will uh, confine ourselves to this second order system. Okay. It is a I told you right, it will isolate the circuit from any load that you attach. So, you can draw any current from it without affecting the circuit. Yeah. So, now this by itself has two poles on top of each other and if you do enclose it in a feedback loop, exactly where the closed loop poles are depends on the feedback loop. What was the feedback loop? What was the amplifier we considered? What was the closed loop amplifier that we with which uh, we did all the calculations? non inverting amplifier what gain 10 if the op amp is ideal the output would be 10 times the input and we carried out all the calculations for this and if we simply dumbly use this op amp in this place, what is the damping factor we get? How much? Yeah, some something of that sort, right? 0 0.03. Okay. Now, the reason that happens is that. If you evaluate the loop gain, okay, what we have is where are the poles? Where are the poles of the loop gain? 10 power 6 what? Radians per second. So, there are two poles at 10 to the 6 radians per second. So, what is the DC loop gain? What is the DC value of the loop gain? No. How much? No. What is the DC loop gain? Let us get it or what is it? Huh? Yeah, you are here now. So. What is that, Manu? 1000, yeah. Loop gain, this is 10,000 is the DC gain of the op amp. Okay. Now, if you go around the loop here, the op amp gives you 10,000 and this gives you 1 by 10. Okay. So, the loop gain is, the DC loop gain is 1000 and it falls off at minus 40 dB per decade. Okay. So, if you did not do anything, this would be the loop gain magnitude and the phase would be, what would the phase look like? What does the phase look like of this loop gain? What does the phase look like? In the what is the what is that? 0 and minus pi, okay. And then what is it at uh, 1 mega radians per second? Minus pi by 2, yeah. So, does that it asymptotically goes to minus pi, but you can see that this starts from 1000 and then it is falling off at minus 40 dB per decade. Somewhere here it crosses unity and you can see even pictorially that the phase has gone very close to minus 180 degrees implying a very, very small phase margin. Okay. So, that is consistent with the very small damping factor. So, what was the solution? What was the solution to fix this? Yeah, what is that? Add a capacitor. What was the objective? to yeah to make the to have a large ratio between the poles to make one of the poles 
go beyond the unity loop gain frequency, but actually it is not obvious how you will increase the frequency of the pole, to, but to decrease it, it is very easy, right. So, what it what we did was that we made one of the poles lower and did not touch the other one, ok. So, we added a capacitor here C 1 prime and if we did that, we would have a picture the other pole does not change at all and it should be beyond the unity uh, loop gain frequency. So, it should appear in the Bode magnitude plot the break point should appear somewhere there right. So, the picture should really look like that right. So, this is 10 to the 6 and the unity loop gain frequency has to be lower than the second pole ok. And how much should you lower it? Well, that depends on the phase margin that you do want, but again let us consider a damping factor of uh, 1 right. If you want a damping factor of 1, what should be the unity loop gain frequency? How much should it be? What is the relationship between the unity loop gain frequency and the pole that comes after it? If the damping factor is 1, 4 times. So, the unity loop gain frequency has to be because this pole does not change you have to push the unity loop gain frequency to 4 times below this number ok. So, this has to be 250 kilo radians per second ok. So, the point is to show that you can also do all these calculations pictorially right. So, now you know that this is uh, 250 kilo radians per second. So, what is the actual first pole frequency? How much is that? what should it be? The frequency of the first pole 250 radians per second because I mean you are going up by a factor of 1000. So, you would also move to the left by a factor of 1000 because this is minus 20 dB per decade meaning inverse proportionality to frequency. So, you have to push the uh, pole one of the poles to 250 radians per second a very low frequency. So, that the phase margin is some healthy number ok. And the phase plot for that on the same graph it will look like that it will have shifted to minus 90 somewhere here and it will stay more or less at minus 90 and slash start slowly changing and eventually go off to minus 180 ok. And here at the unity loop gain frequency if you compute the phase how much should it be phase lag what will it be? No, what is the phase lag? 104 degrees ok. So, the phase here will be minus 104 degrees. So, the phase margin would be 76 degrees ok. So, this I told you is a reliable way not the best way of uh, uh, stabilizing a negative feedback system. This business of uh, stabilizing a negative feedback system is also called compensation or frequency compensation. This is a way of frequency compensation of negative feedback systems ok. So, you make one of the uh, poles so low that you have a first order roll off and all the other poles and even if you have zeros everything comes after the unity loop gain frequency. If you do that it will be stable ok. Is this fine? Any questions about this? Ok. So, now uh, we also had in this case what we were doing is uh, we are loading one of the nodes with a capacitor and yeah we also calculated what was the capacitance value you needed 4 nano farads right. If you put 4 nano farads there it will do the job ok. Here uh, what we are doing is moving one of the poles to lower frequencies and leaving the other pole untouched right. We already know that there is another way that is if you have a capacitance across the second stage across the negative gain amplifier the poles will be split ok. That is one of the poles moves to a higher frequency and the other pole moves to a lower frequency. So, that seems like a better option we will see why it is better, but we have seen this business of pole splitting which also seems to do exactly what we want for frequency compensation that is to keep the two poles well separated ok. 
yeah we'll see so what do we have to do then so instead of this there are a couple of ways to think about this okay one is i mean we have already studied pole splitting so you do know that if you have a capacitor across this you will get pole splitting okay so another way if you didn't know about it you could still arrive at this by thinking that hey i have to put a four nanofarad capacitor here four nanofarads which is quite large especially on an integrated circuit it's very very large okay so one way to imitate a large capacitor is if you connect a small capacitor across a negative gain amplifier you get a large capacitor here so you might think that hey connecting a capacitor like this effectively gives me a large capacitor from here to ground which is exactly what i had earlier okay so that's another way to think about it but we already studied pole splitting so we can go with that idea okay so now the question is what is the capacitor value that we have to have here did you calculate any of you one 1.08 gigahertz what is it 10 to the minus 4 14 so 0.01 picofarads okay now that seems like very low right almost not there so anybody else calculate this 2.4 picofarads any any other answers what is the problem in calculating i thought i gave clear instructions to sit and do this i mean this is highly irritating okay i mean every time just before the exam there are all kinds of random requests for more practice problems and i give you some problems and you don't do it what is this it's been one week what is the problem i don't understand did you do it yes you huh yeah you go find out from your friends what the hell happened what is the problem in working out some simple algebra or you all like surprises you want to solve everything for the first time in the quiz is that right now this is exactly why you make all kinds of goofs in the quiz okay so if we do have a structure like this we have analyzed is this is the system we had analyzed this is the common source amplifier okay now how is this connected to this what is the relationship how will you use the results huh what's that not an equivalent and then so i have in this case i have some v out let's say and i have the transfer function v out by vd okay for this particular circuit okay and let me call that h of s what will be the transfer function of this in terms of h of s and some other extra stuff you understand the second circuit from vi to v out has a transfer function h of s what is the transfer function of the first one v not by vd 
obviously i mean not work it out from scratch but in terms of hfs okay is it related or not it is related so what is the relationship First of all, the most components you can make a one to one correspondence right, they may be denoted by different symbols, but CGS is C 1, C G D is C C and so on ok. So, I assume that in H of S you will substitute the terms appropriately, obviously H of S will be written in terms of C G S, C G D and C L and you substitute C 1, C C and C 2 in that place ok, that is trivial. Then to turn this part into its feminine equivalent, what do you get? Between these terminals between that point and ground, what will you get? What will be the value of the voltage source? What will be the value of the resistance? Looking this way, what is the thevenin resistance? R O 1, ok. So, you will get R O 1 and what is the what is the voltage? Minus G M 1 R O 1, ok. So, this is what is connected to this part of the circuit and this is what is connected to this part of the circuit and this and this are exactly the same right. I mean forget the change in symbols that is not the important thing I could denote both of them by the same thing. So, and R s is R o 1 that is clear and V i is minus G m 1 R o 1 ok. So, V naught by V d of the op amp is minus G m 1 R o 1 times H of S, where H of S is V out by V i of the common source amplifier and it is reasonable right. All it is doing is multiplying up the common source amplifier gain by G m 1 R o 1 ok. The common source amplifier by itself would have given you a gain of uh, D c gain of 100. Now, this is multiplying it by another G m 1 R o 1 to give you 10,000 and the poles have not changed at all ok. So, the point of doing this is basically you already solved something once right, why you can sit and calculate the transfer function of this and in fact, probably you should do it just for additional practice, but you have already calculated the transfer function of the uh, common source amplifier, you have calculated its zeros and poles, what will be the zeros and poles of the op amp? Exactly the same because this H of S is multiplied by some frequency independent number G m 1 R o 1 ok. So, you really really do not have to calculate anything additionally except for the DC gain, it is only the DC gain that has changed ok. So, the same poles and zeros will apply right, is that correct or no? So, now what do we do? Because of C C there is pole splitting and P 1 that is I will call whatever pole is associated with this node that is P 1 and that node that is G O 2 that is P 2 ok. So, first go back to wherever you have the common source amplifier analysis and write down the expressions for these. What is it the final goal? How do we want the poles to be arranged? But not just far we have some quantitative criterion right we want damping factor of 1 what is that that we want? We want P 2 here I mean the magnitude of it the positive part that is that should be 4 times omega u loop and how much is the unity loop gain frequency? How much will it be? What will it be? What is the I mean if it is well designed what will be the what is the relationship between the you want the relationship between the two poles right. Now, I have a relationship between second pole and the unity loop gain frequency. How do I bring in the first pole? Yeah. So, if it is well designed, if it follows a first order behavior, if this is the unity loop gain frequency that will be equal to the D C loop gain L naught times the low frequency pole ok. In this case it is 4000 times P 1 ok and the D C loop gain itself what is the DC gain of the op amp? It is G m 1 R o 1 G m 2 R o 2 ok and what is L naught? L naught is A naught by k or A naught by 10 in this case ok. 
and what is the expression for P 1, what is the expression for P 2. Please go back and write it down and huh? Omega. Omega. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, it is. No, no. Meaning, uh, if it was uh, falling off at minus forty dB per decade, then it will be square root of L naught times P one, right? It's only if it is falling at minus twenty dB per decade that it will be L naught times P one. But that's a well-designed system. That's what you want. That's what I mean. What I asked you to do was this, right? A naught is this, and everywhere we will have A naught P1 by k. So this A naught P1 will appear as a product, and in fact, it's a A naught P1 is related to just the op amp. K is from the feedback network, right? The op amp has a DC gain A naught and a low frequency pole of P1, and k belongs to the feedback network. So A naught P1 is a significant quantity. We'll see what that is. Now, uh, what is that? What's the Pole, what is P1? What is the expression for P1? What is that? Minus? So, I will just use the magnitude, we know that it is in the left half plane. What do we have? Yeah, so C C times 1 plus G M 2 by G O 2 plus C 1 plus C 2 times G 1 by G 1 by G 1 by G 2 ok. And what is the expression for A naught? What is the expression for A naught, the DC gain? G M 1 what? G M 1 R 1, G M 2. R O 2, yeah, right. So, what is the product? It looks complicated, but you do know that especially when you have deliberately add C C, which is the most dominant term in the denominator? First one, ok. So, let us say I retain only this and neglect all of that, ok, because G M 2 by G O 2 is a large number, right, it is 100 after all. And if C C happens to be comparable to C 1 and C 2, that we have to check later, all of the other things can be neglected. So, what is the result we get? What is this product? G M 1 by C C that is all ok. So, you end up with a very simple expression. The expression for both A naught and P 1 are complicated, but the product is not and there is actually a very good reason why it comes out like that which we will see later ok. So, if you do remember this for the two stage op amp calculations will become much easier. You can also do it with I mean following all the steps for P 1 and P 2 and so on, but you do not have to do it. You can do it this way ok. Is this fine? Now, what is the expression for P 2? Again, leaving out the negative sign. Huh? G M 2 C C by C 1 plus C C. What do we have? Ok, neglect the other terms, right? I mean that is really like very small, we are talking about something proportional to G O 2, right, G O 2 and G O 1 and so on. Let us say we neglect all of that stuff. Then C 2 plus C 1 C C by 
C1 plus CC. Okay, so here I have neglected some things which are small. Okay, so what is it that we want now for uh, damping factor one? Yeah, four times that. I mean, it can be some number of times that. Basically, we can evaluate. So, we want G m 2 ok, is this fine? So, find the value of C C from here that is all. Okay. We will get a quadratic equation in uh, C C just find it. You get C C to be 1.1 picofarads. Okay, so please go back and substitute this value of C C into the exact expression and find the poles. Right? You know how to find the transfer function. It has a zero and two poles. You can find everything. Okay, so there are many approximations here. You can also see the effect of it and whether it's significant or not and so on. But we did some cheating here. What kind of uh, transfer function will we get? This H of S. What will it have? It will also have a 0 which we have completely neglected. Okay. Now, where is that 0? What is the location of the 0? G m 2 by C C. Yeah. So, the 0 is at G m 2 by C C. It is a right half line 0. Okay. Now, so far all I said was we have to arrange for the loop gain to be like this. So, that so that 